morning, good evening, and wherever the sun may find you. My name is Walt, and this is Coffee and Concepts on Keystroke Medium. Uh, we are continuing our little series uh, this week where we're doing rare finds and precious grinds, where we're going to kind of start off with the precious grinds bit. Um, and uh, to do that, we're going to bring up a little bit of something right on our screen, and we're going to talk about some coffee. So today we're talking about another rare find in the coffee world. Uh, this is Aspina coffee. This is one of the oldest coffee plantations in the world uh, as far as Colombian style coffee goes. Um, it is the um, it's been operating pretty much since uh, since uh, colonial times and this is just an absolute crazy crazy leo vaccaro on facebook good morning sir um this is an absolutely crazy cup of coffee if you are looking for one um if you are looking for decadent if you are looking for the top notch um coffee that takes just years to refine uh to refine uh aspina is is really like the Maserati of coffee. Um, uh, William Joseph Roberts, good morning. Uh, and do oh, boss man Josh Hayes, why are you always taking my money? Oh, just wait, <laughs> just wait. Because um, certain blends of this particular brand of coffee can go for upwards to near uh, $700 uh, for um, a 12 ounce bag. <laughs> it is just ridiculous. Ridiculous, um, and the reason it's so costly is because um, a uh, most of the beans are grown in um, like uh, an ash-based soil uh, high in the mountains. They take five, three to five years to cultivate a um, a batch of the cherries and then refine them into beans and then go through the roasting process. It's just absolutely amazing um, the kind of care and um ability that they put into um into perfecting the beans of spina coffee um it's very rare i've only had it uh i've only had it once um it, it's just unbelievable in, in how much um their their particular coffees can go for um their highest offering pretty much the uh the Grand Marquis, as it were, um, is their Dynasty blend, and it is it, it's it's really amazing. Uh, <laughs> Josh Hayes is seven hundred. No, and he just walks away. Um, so um, one of the things that happens with refining uh, coffee beans of this type and nature is sometimes it uh, develops almost uh, the same qualities as uh, long cultivated alcohols. Um, so their dynasty blend is is kind of got this really exotic blend of um, kind of like cherry hints of chocolate uh, a little bit of coconut um, but they they have like a almost like a bite on your tongue at the end of the finish of this coffee that uh it harkens back to like really fine wines um, they usually roast this as like a um just the very cusp of um a french roast so just the very underside of a dark roast um and of course you can get you can get uh different uh, varieties. I mean, they make everything uh, from a Grand Reserve to um, a, um, a deep red. I mean, there's, there's all sorts of uh, flavors that this particular uh, coffee plantation uses in order to uh, share their coffees with the world. So, I mean, if you've never heard of it, um, look it up online. Um, the the estate and the and the plantation on which this stuff is grown, like I said, they could take up to um, uh, three to five years to produce a, a single batch of coffee, which is why it's so expensive. Um, they're um, 
there uh, you can get uh, different flavor profiles, stuff like cinnamon and orange and uh, uh, just uh, amazing, amazing, amazing coffee. I won't even tell you what the single cup that I had uh, cost at the time. Uh, thankfully, I wasn't paying for it. Um, <laughs> Leo Vaccaro, this show is coffee porn to caffeine addicts. Yes, so if you if you get a chance, uh, you know, check out this particular brand uh, brand of coffee. It's just absolutely spectacular. Um, it's one of the most expensive coffees in the world. Um, the um, the only the only other coffee I know that's a little more expensive is Black Ivory, and we'll cover that in another show. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, Aspina coffee in South America and Colombia is just amazing, amazing coffee. Just because of, I mean, just the cultivation process alone and and how it's grown, um, and how they mix different flavor profiles into it is just astounding. So if you got like a, a good thirty minutes to waste, check them out online, and uh, yeah, you you'll you, you'll definitely be. Um, amazed by what they put into each cup of coffee. <laughs> Excuse me. And that being said, um, I'd like to talk a little bit about rare finds. I love old books, love old books. Um, I, I love finding them. I love uh, getting my hands on them. Um, uh, recently, because of certain associations that uh, I've been making lately, um, I've been trying to get uh, um, reestablish a library that I've had uh, in the past, and then I sold off when um, when I was moving many, many years ago. So I, I, I wanted to have these books in my collection again. So I went through and I found a lot of them on my own, but then certain ones, you know, just really hard to find. Um, and you'd think that this is just a thing you might be able to just whip out of the ether just as you need it. But um, there is actually a website, pretty useful, um, once you learn how to navigate it. Uh, and it's called bookfinder.com. Um, the interesting thing about this is it's a free, um, it's a free resource that basically acts as like the Google for books. And it just finds your title, author, category um, that you're looking for, um, kind of gives you a, an overall list in how it works. Um, one of the things I'm always searching for uh, myself, uh, because I know my wife really likes them, is um, Stephen King books. Um, the older and rarer, the better. Um, if I can get original editions, I always try and get those. Um, many moons ago, she was on the hunt for the Bachman books, and uh, they went almost nearly extinct. You couldn't find them just because so many people wanted to read them, uh, Stephen King's alias. And uh, the reason they went extinct is there was a, uh, um, there was a mass attack event where, uh, and I, you know, I'm not going to dignify the event or the people that were involved uh, as far as uh, committing the event. And I will not insult the memory of the people who suffered through that event by glorifying it. But that being the case, one of Stephen King's oldest stories written under a pseudonym is about one of these events. And he took it off the shelves to kind of uh, keep it out of the hands of people who might have seen it as glorifying such things. But it made the book really hard to find because it was part of a collection of short stories. Um, so you put in uh, the Bachman books by Stephen King, and uh, you know it'll it'll pretty much come right up um, with a large selection of uh, um, you know you can even de um, detect uh, like use uh, uh, selections of what language it was originally in or what language you're searching for it in if it was translated in a language so and it gives a, a pretty good idea of where you can find them so you can give on a click and it'll run through um kind of like a clearinghouse of where you can find it some ebay you'll have some sellers that you recognize some that you don't um and some of these i've used before a books i've used uh a libris is okay, but you're going to pay a little bit more being in America because it's a Canadian company. Um, and there is a huge, huge, huge markup. Anytime you pass printed media from one side of the border to the, to another on can in Canada. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's, 
Uh, but I mean, basically you have this huge clearinghouse of, of where you can find these books, the condition that they come in, um, where they're being sold from or how they were acquired. Uh, so yeah, it's, um, it, it's a pretty neat service that you can get as far as, uh, finding older books, things that are out of print, things that, um, you didn't even know um, existed initially, and now you just, you, you know, you're a little late to the party, so you just want to find a copy to have on your shelf. Um, I know, guilty pleasure, but Frank Frazetta was one of my favorite artists as a kid. He was just, um, he was just so prolific and so powerful in every image. Um, you know, not to mention as a young kid, you're sitting there and like, wow, everybody's half naked. This is great. So, um, but I mean, you know, uh, he just had these amazing images. And one of his images was this dude sitting on a horse holding this big honk and ax. And he had this massive uh, swept forward horned helmet. And uh, he later on, um, he actually commissioned somebody to do some uh, ghostwriting with him. And uh, they produced a series. Try and find those books now. If you find them on Amazon, uh, minimum for a um, 300 page trade paperback um from the 1980s early 90s you're talking minimum about anywhere from 50 to 100 bucks um so they're a little they're a little on the pricey side to find but i mean you can you can find them through bookfinder it's it's one of the many services out there that does stuff like this um and uh i, I think it's it's really uh, a great resource if you're trying to find books that are out there out of print not really showing up in your standard searches uh that's a that's an easy way to uh, find what you need. But speaking of finding what you need, the best way to do that is to check out Josh Scott and Chuck on Monday when they talk Keystroke Medium Live. Uh, there was no show this week uh, just because they uh, they had some stuff going on. So um, this is going to be an off week for them. But normally they have roundtable discussions and interesting guests on to talk uh, everything in and around uh, reading, writing, and a little bit more. Of course, coffee, coffee and concepts on Tuesday morning, 7.30 a.m. Eastern. We have Lauren and Kayleen, uh, The Writer's Journey on Thursday. That is 8 p.m. Oh, no, it's Friday now. <gasps> yeah, Fridays. Fridays, mid-afternoon, two in between 2, 3 p.m. Um, uh, and uh, that is um, tips and tricks of the publishing world for the um, new and experienced reader and writer. So lots of people to uh, kind of ingest and then digest. There is uh, Josh Guy, you doing long form storytelling on YouTube where they, uh, they really pick apart a meat of a matter. Uh, and speaking of YouTube, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can have more great content. The more people we have coming in and checking out these shows, the more we can bring you. Uh, and uh, shows kind of like marathon author author <laughs> you can tell the coffee's wearing off marathon authored by james s aaron and kayleen Storytime, uh which usually on mondays uh she does a great job of finding first chapters of your new and uh future favorite books uh we want to thank you for coming out this morning and checking out uh coffee and concepts and we'll check you out next time Thank you. Have a great day.